If Rugrats has taught me anything, it's that babies are capable of far more than their parents think they are. Dad wants us to walk to him. Walk? Are you kidding me? Bitch, we're gonna run across the entire goddamn capital wasteland. The question is, can you beat Fallout 3 as a baby? First things first, how do you even leave Vault 101 as a baby? As far as I know, there are two ways. The first is to use a glitch. The second is to use console commands. We're gonna use console commands in a bit, but we're escaping the real way. The video I watched said to put the ball in the left corner of the doorway, walk against the right corner, and immediately close the door as soon as it opens, while also heading into the next room. If done correctly, you'll have access to the hallway. If not, you'll be faced with a locked door. It took me quite a while, but I did get it. Then, there was just the small task of jumping into the loving arms of the rip in reality itself. Embrace the void, and your next objective will be to escape Vault 101. Luckily, by starting the escape quest before you're supposed to, most of the NPCs aren't spawned. So we don't have to deal with Vault Security or Butch's whiny mother. The ride roaches, however, are an issue. Now's the time to talk about console commands, because I said I would be using them. The first thing to understand about playing Fallout 3 as a baby is that you move slowly. So incredibly slowly. I wasn't about to spend 30 hours playing Fallout 3 just to do the main quest as a baby. So I used the set game time multiplier command to speed up the entire game. With no NPCs or enemies around, it appears as though I only increased my movement speed, but that's not the case everything speeds up. My movement, enemy movement, the day-night cycle, dialogue, saving, everything. You may consider this cheating, but I do not. Everything in the game happens as it should, it just happens faster. Out of Vault 101, the next stop is Megaton, because Amada never stole her father's 10mm pistol, so I'm left with only a baseball bat and a BB gun. Also, because you need to bring up the dialogue menu before you can use your Pip-Boy. Here's another thing I did, I installed a Pip-Boy mod, because without it, your Pip-Boy glitches through your arm, meaning you can't see anything. Well armed and loaded with stim packs, the journey towards Vault 112 begins. This was not fun, not by any stretch of the imagination. Because I'm so slow, I can't outrun low-level creatures like bloat flies or mole rats. Also, because I'm small, my attacks are borderline worthless. It takes a lot of shots just to bring down a single mole rat. Vicious dogs are even harder. Fighting isn't really an option. The upside to being so small is that by going into third person, I can see a lot of the world around me, so sneaking is a bit easier. Even then, though, I got into fights with the local wildlife. Something else you'll start to notice is the objects flying all over the place. It's a result of the increased game speed. They do a small amount of damage. As the game speeds up, they move even faster and will do more damage in less time. I made it a rule that if they kill an NPC or an enemy, I wouldn't loot their corpse, because I didn't kill them. Finally, I got to Smith Casey's garage and made my way inside. The rad roaches weren't much of an issue, but I had forgotten about the mole rats inside. The first two were a bitch and a half, the other two guarding the basement were even worse. Eventually, many minutes later, I defeated them, donned a Vault 112 jumpsuit, and loaded up the simulation. Not having time for nonsense, I immediately activated the failsafe and left. Fuck you, Robert. Uh, Betty. The extent of my quest skipping knowledge ends here. I figured that since Dad was heading for River City, I could just follow him. He'd defend his son. And that plan worked for a while. Then he lost the fight, went unconscious, and his body warped away, just like every other small moving object in the world when the game speed is too high. Fine, whatever. Who needs him? I can get to River City by myself. I met some raiders, killed them, and was finally starting to get some better weapons. The hunting rifle made things so much easier. My plan was to kill some innocent people and rob them so I could get that guy in Megaton to be my companion. Spoiler alert, that didn't really pan out. As I got closer to Rivet City, I discovered this fun thing where because you're so small, your default position in water, that is, how high you float in water, is actually beneath the water, so you drown unless you're constantly jumping. And, with the game speed at three times its normal speed, that's a real pain in the ass. Finally, I got inside Rivet City. In an effort to become a questionable individual, I stole weapons from the Rivet City market by dragging them into the corner, out of sight, and then stealing them. Then I spoke to Dad, met up with him and the scientists inside the Jefferson Memorial gift shop. 
I wiped out the mutants, flipped a switch or something, explored a pipe, and watched Daddy die. The scientists insisted that I escort them to the Citadel, which I did under protest. There, I spoke to Elder Lyons, got the location of Vault 87, and fast traveled back to Little Lamplight. Did I mention that I stopped there on my way to Vault 112? Because I did. The little shit in charge opened up Murder Pass for me. After killing many super mutants, I met up with Fox, who got the gek for me. Then I got ambushed by the Enclave. Colonel Pumpkin Spice was rude to me. Good thing for me, the president was on my side. I helped some Enclave soldiers who seemed ready to go to hell, took the virus from the president, reunited with my old buddy Fox, returned to the Citadel, got a sweet suit of power armor, and took the final steps towards the point of no return. The showdown between the Brotherhood of Steel and the Enclave has arrived. I thought I looked pretty funny wearing power armor, rifle in hand, running so far behind Liberty Prime that I was less than useless to them in the fight. Even at 1.7 times normal speed, that march to the Jefferson Memorial was still too long. Once inside, the Enclave soldiers seemed to agree that death was a preferable alternative to communism as they ran at me, ready to die. We're in the endgame now. Someone must sacrifice themselves to activate Project Purity. It was my father's legacy. It must be me. My death will mean that everyone in the Capital Wasteland has a chance to begin anew. And I can't reach the buttons. I can reach a few of them, but not the ones in the back. What a shame. Sentinel Lions, this one falls to you. Good luck with the dying and everything. In her last moments, she crawled towards the glass. I stood just outside of reach, sharing the pain with her as I spammed the E button to make those stupid baby noises. And at long last, it is over. I've beaten Fallout 3 as a baby. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, this fucking sucked. I hated it. This run was in no way fun. Being small in and of itself wasn't an issue. It was being so slow. It probably didn't help matters that I did this right after playing New Vegas as a giant, where my speed was much higher than normal. Regardless, Fallout 3 can be beaten as a baby, but I would not, under any circumstances, recommend that you try it. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 3 as a baby. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.